Good day, folks. Today, we're taking a look at Android x86 based on the AOSP or Android Open Source Project. This is essentially the same Android OS that we're familiar with from Android smartphones and tablets for what they're worth to x86 so they can be run on any conventional x86 or x86 64 derived computer. So today I had a bit of an interesting video request and to try this on the thin client. So what the heck, let's give it a shot. So I've already downloaded Android x86. I'm going to use the 9.0 release which I believe this R2 version down here is the latest as of the making of this video. There is no Android 10 derived Android x86 as of right now, although I would be really interested to try it because I want to see how it would run on a x86 based computer. So if you come to their website, it's pretty basic, but it's not too bad because it only gives you really what you need to get going. So what's nice about the Android x86 project is you have full access to the Play Store and typically Google Apps come included with. So Gmail comes included, Chrome comes included, again the Play Store, the Play Services, and you can install pretty much whatever else from there and it just acts as if you have an Android tablet strapped to your monitor. And if you have one of those uh, two-in-one convertible devices, or if you just have like a tablet that just so happened to run Windows, it's a perfect replacement if you want something that runs Android. Now, not all apps will probably work with this, which makes sense because a lot of apps are designed for smartphones and ARM SOCs, but hey, it's a good effort to get an operating system that's lightweight and still supported by tons of apps, and you have something that could potentially revive a computer. I wouldn't consider it breathing new life into it, but it would probably be like a revival. Sort of how like the old days of Linux breathes new life into an aging computer running Windows XP, if anybody remembers the days of that, because that used to be everywhere on the internet. But I digress. So, yeah. Like I said, I've already downloaded this. We're going to be trying it on the thin client. So let's swap over to crappy freehand camera style and get on with it. So for those who are watching my channel for the first time and don't know the specifications of my thin client, I'll give you a brief rundown. This has the AMD GX-420GI embedded SOC style APU with Radeon R7E graphics. It has 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM, although it's just one stick, but it, you know it's, it's got 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and it has a 16 gig uh, M.2 SSD in it because that's what it came with when it was new when ordered from HP. I have plans of upgrading it, but I haven't gotten around to it as of this video. There's another video that I've talked about it briefly where, you know, cost is kind of a prohibiting factor right now, but I digress. Let's get the USB stick into the computer and we will get it turned on. All right, I apologize about any potential glare you might have on the screen. There's not much I can do about that when there's a great big windowsill here in the background that I can't exactly shade off. So you'll just have to bear with me. About the most compensation that I can do for this is just to turn the brightness up on the LCD itself. And that's about all I can do. So let's pop in the boot menu and we're gonna boot the generic flash disk. I love the name that it calls it, really creative HP. It should then boot to this menu, as you can see, where it will automatically boot the live mode after 30 seconds. We're not gonna do that. In fact, we're gonna just start right into the installation. Now you might notice that it says Ubuntu at HD1 GPT1. That's because this already has uh, Kubuntu Linux on the SSD at the moment because we were dinking around with it with the uh, golf with your friends. I might come back to that later, but for the sake of the video, we're just going to wipe the SSD clean and start the installation. And here we are at the text mode installer. As you can see, it has two partitions at the moment. There's a VFAT partition and an EXT4 partition, mostly probably because of the fact that Linux does a VFAT partition for UEFI reasons. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, modify partitions, I believe. So I think it's Alt-C. Nope, that's reboot. F well, that was a... Uh, exactly how we we're supposed to do it. Uh, nice. Let's try that again. 
I would do the live version, but I think there's some driver problems. So it'd probably be best if I just installed it right to the, to the hard drive. Well, we're already off to a great start. I managed to find the menu to partition the disks. And as you can see, um, nothing's really happened. So I think we're not gonna use the partitioner built into the Android x86 installer utility. I'm just going to use Ubuntu and Gparted to just erase the disk and leave it uh, blank. And then we'll come back into this and try it again. Yes, I know I really need to invest in some kind of a capture card device. I apologize, I'm working on that at some point in the future. It's something I want to do, so just give me some, give me some, give me some space, guys. I, I, I'm figuring it out. I know this crappy freehand camera style recording at the screen is low budget, but that's exactly what I am. So nice. Okay, and UEFI is kicking in. Here we go. I'm gonna just skip the file system check because I've used this USB before and it's fine. So no need to do that. All right, and we're in Ubuntu, so we're just going to go to the Try Ubuntu. And this is not really a direct tutorial about how to use Gparted, so please don't interpret it this way. This is just me using it real quick to do a basic task, which you could really do with any kind of modern installer. Uh, for an operating system, most of them, if not all of them, should give you the option to uh, erase a disk, you would hope. So, once we get into the desktop here, then we can go launch Gparted. There we go. So now, we'll hop into here, go to Gparted. This USB stick is really not that fast, but it gets the job done. So we'll give it a second to find the SSD here. I think it already has. Okay, that's the USB stick. This is the SSD. So we want to take this erase, take this erase, and we want to apply the changes. And there we go. So now our SSD is completely blank, which is good. So now let's go ahead and shut this down and we'll swap out USB sticks and we'll give it another go. And we'll see if it works any better this time or if we're gonna have the same issues as we were having before with the partitioner. Hopefully now it just sees the disk and we can just select it and then Android x86 can do whatever it wants with it. All right, and the gift just keeps on giving here. We have nothing, which is fine. So let's try to detect devices. Interesting. All right, so let's just do create and modify partitions. Okay, it does see it. And okay. So I think what we'll just do, do new, default, whatever, and then just do the default. Um, just all the default settings is fine. We're just gonna set the volume name as Android. And there we go. So that should be fine. I don't believe we have options for anything else. So we're just gonna go ahead and write the changes to the disk. So hopefully this works. We're gonna go and quit out of this. There's our VFAT, so okay. And we'll just format it as ext4 because I think that's what Android uses, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll just let that do its thing. 132%, how do you manage to do that? <laughs> wow. This thing really likes to format its disks. <laughs> yes, I do want to install EFI Grub since we're booted in UEFI mode. Do you want to install system directory as read write? Making system be read write is easier for debugging, but it needs more disk space and longer installation time. I don't think we're gonna need to debug, so we're gonna leave that as a no. And we're off to the races with installing, so I'm gonna come back when this is done. All right, we are ready to go, so let's go ahead and reboot. So I can go take the USB stick out of the drive, or out of the computer, rather not out of the drive, because that'd be a little, that'd be a little interesting. And let's see if this works. 
Um, error, no boot. <laughs> well, that worked really well, guys. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, that's how you install Android x86, definitely. <laughs> Uh, obviously something happened. I don't know what. Um, let me just try rebooting. Let's look at the boot menu, see what happened. Nice, somebody dropped something on the floor in the hallway because everybody could hear it. Ah, it's showing up as a legacy boot device, not a UEFI one. Okay, is that all? No. Weird, okay. So obviously that didn't work. So, uh, I'm going to try reinstalling it again. Boy, this makes me feel real smart. There's actually an option here to auto-install to specified hard disk. Wow. Why not just use that the first time? Because that would take care of all of my mess for me. I don't have to worry about partitioning and crap. Ding dong. All right, let's try this. Okay. We're going to do the auto-installation. And I'll try it again. And... Okay, so, oh, there's the there's the good percentage. All right, so I'll come back once this is installed once again and hopefully it boots. All right, well, while I have to listen to the irritatingly loud smoke detector bleeping in the background, I actually see Android x86 showing up in the UEFI boot sources. So I wonder if that will work because that obviously didn't show up before. Ooh, hey, it's booting. Yes, let's do it. I wonder how quick this will actually start up off of an M.2 uh, flash disk like this. It should certainly boot up a heck of a lot faster than the USB stick did. And it's looking like a good sign so far it's picked up the screen resolution. Oh my god, people, would you turn off the stupid smoke detector? Nobody wants to listen to it. No, of course they won't shut off the stupid smoke detector because everybody around here is a bunch of f**tards and they don't know what the f they're doing as far as cooking is concerned. So they leave large dumps of paper towel on the counter for everybody else to clean up but them and then they wonder why everybody else gets in trouble. All right, so here we are at the welcome screen here. Obviously we have no battery because this is not a laptop or a tablet for that matter. I have no idea if the sound is working but that's probably the least of my worries. It also seems like the Wi-Fi does not work right now, but that doesn't really surprise me because uh, this is an Intel wireless card, so Linux probably doesn't have the drivers for it. So for now, we'll just hit skip, and then I'll try connecting it to Ethernet in a little bit. We'll see if we can get it onto the internet, try downloading some apps. So Pacific Daylight Time, uh, don't use location for the moment. Um, sure you can send diagnostic data, that's fine, whatever. Um, no pin for now, I'm just going to leave it because I don't want it to do anything. And then for our home screen, we have two options. We could do quick step or task bar, which you guys can just barely see there. I really apologize about that. For now, we're gonna use the quick step and just hit just once for the moment. And here we are. So as you can see, this is Android. It looks very similar to that of the stock launcher. There are a couple differences though, mainly being that the navigation buttons are down here in the lower left, kind of like old Android like 4.0 on tablets, if anybody remembers that uh, set of days where the navigation buttons were down here on tablets and then 4.2 came out and then they put them in the center in the stupidest location because Google doesn't know what to do. So anyways, uh, we'll go into settings, and there you can see we're using about half the internal SSD out of the box. I uh, don't know where it's getting the extra 16 gigs from. That's really interesting, because um, obviously we don't have 32 gigs. Maybe it's just glitched or something, because this only has a 16 gig SSD, so I almost wonder if it's just the way that this is representing it. I'm not too, I'm not really too sure. Um, these navigation buttons do work and we'll do that here in a little bit. Um, system, go under advanced. Interesting, it actually picked up the name of the thin client. So HP T630 thin client. So that's really interesting. 
and then we should be able to tap on this advanced. There we go. And then as you can see, uh, Android version nine, this is the original AOSP version of Android nine. So it has the original uh, security patch that it would have shipped with, which is very, very out of date. And even if I connect this to the internet, I believe this does not update to anything because it doesn't really point to anything at Google for security updates, which that could be a bit of a problem. Um, and I know there's antivirus apps on the Play Store, but that really shouldn't have to happen. Well, I guess as long as you're smart, you don't have to worry about it. So we'll hit just once again, go back to the home screen. And again, this is just like Android. So up at the top, you got your notifications. So you just click and drag it down and here you go. So app updates are ready, connect to Wi-Fi. Well, I can't do that right now. So uh, USB drive those work so you can use it for extra storage it thinks this is a tablet or you can use for portable storage for transferring stuff so we're just going to hit portable for the moment so we can go into a file browser and eject it as you can see there's the files app wow it actually is really quick like just just saying like it's really quick so here is our usb stick full of all of the stuff i used rufus to make this so that the rufus icons right there and I'll also show this to you, because why not? We'll show the taskbar option. So what this does, it kind of gives you like this desktop interface, and it gives you these icons down here for your apps that are currently open. As far as I know, at this moment in the interface, there is no way to get to the multitasking ribbon, which is a little weird. I'm not sure why that is. I'm gonna go back to quick step for a moment. I believe if you click and hold this down, you get the Google Assistant. Yes. Or no, it just takes you right to Google now for the moment. That makes sense. I'm just gonna set quick step as always for the moment. But yeah, there you can see there's the gallery, which <laughs> you can see the pictures on the USB stick. That's pretty interesting. You can see what kind of icons are in here. <laughs> there's OpenSUSE. Anyways, um, then there's Gmail. Then here is Chrome, which wants you to log in. I'm not gonna do that right now. And then contacts go to the Play Store. And as you can see, even with four gigs of RAM and the AMD GX420 GI, this thing is snappy. Like it almost feels as fast as a modern Android smartphone in a way. There's a phone app, even though this obviously isn't gonna be able to use phone, but that's just because this is based on AOSP. And then calendar, which, yeah, whatever. This looks straight out of Android 4.3. <laughs> if I'm being honest, uh, clock. So it's just a standard clock. And then uh, I got a terminal emulator. So there you go. It's really small, but most of these Android things usually come with a terminal emulator. So you can do LS to list your directory because this is based on Linux in the end anyway. And this is further proven by the fact you go uname dash R as you can see, it shows the kernel version. This is based on kernel 4.19, Android x86-64. So yeah, not too bad. And of course it detects that I have an external keyboard connected, but you can, for whatever reason, you could probably turn on a virtual keyboard, which I don't know why you'd want to do that. I guess if you had a touchscreen device, but this is obviously not a touchscreen, so what's the point? So my thing is, I'm not sure how you're supposed to get access to the multitasking ribbon because they don't give you the option to. My guess is that you just leave everything open in the background, which that's usually fine because Android can manage itself as far as memory usage is concerned. It's just I would think you could be able to close out of the apps. All right, don't care about that feature. And uh, I think, yeah, we'll go into here. We're going to eject this USB stick real quick. That way I can take it out of the front. The only problem I see now is just, I need to go and connect this to ethernet so we can try to download stuff on it. So the only way that I can think of that we could probably shut this down is just by holding down the power button because I don't believe Android by default gives you any kind of power options through the settings. I don't believe they do. Uh, no, it doesn't really look like it. No. Okay, so whatever. So I'm just gonna go try pressing the power button and we'll see what it does. Oh, okay, we do have the little UX on the side. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and hit power off. And it's off, holy crap, that shut down quick. <laughs>
Okay, so let's swap computers, or computers, well, we're not really gonna swap computers, we're just gonna swap monitors, really. And we'll try this again, we'll see what we can do. All right, so just for fun, let's see how fast this starts up. So start your stopwatches now. And we're booted up. Holy crap. And interestingly, number one, we have text scaling. Number two, we actually have our navigation buttons back, which is rather interesting. So, okay. Hmm. Let me go get some lights on so we can actually have a better look at this. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go freehand on this because of the fact that, well, I don't actually have any kind of gimbal or tripod or anything for my phone. So you'll have to forgive me for the quality. But... Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So let's go ahead and just scroll all the way over, close all the apps out, and we'll start afresh here. So we are now connected to Ethernet. I have no idea if that's actually meaning that we're connected to the internet. So I might as well try opening Chrome here, seeing if we can navigate to a website. So we'll just try eBay, for example. No internet. Ah, interesting. Okay. So I wonder what's going on there. Uh, does not look like... We have options for Ethernet, and obviously turning it on does nothing. So I doubt the terminal emulator is going to have anything in it either regarding trying to get something out of it. So uh, give me just a minute. I'm going to see if there's like an IF config or something. No, it only shows the loopback. So that sucks. So at the moment... It looks like there are no networking drivers in Android for this device. So that sucks. I wonder if plugging in a USB Wi-Fi adapter would actually fix that problem that we're having. Not that I would expect it to, but maybe it's just because again, it doesn't like the internal one. So I've got this, um, I've got this Lynx, Lynx this Netgear thing. I'm gonna try plugging it into a USB port on the front of the thin client here. We'll see what um, Android thinks of it. And um, let's see here. So let's go back to settings. We'll see if that will actually remedy it. Oh, oh, -ho -ho! hey, it actually worked. Hey, I doubted myself there for a minute. Don't do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this connected to my internet then. Okay, and here we go. I doubt it myself. Okay, so now we're actually back in business. So let's go back to uh, Chrome here. We'll try loading eBay. Hey, eBay actually loads. Cool. All right, awesome. So let's go to the Play Store here. And I'm going to sign in. Dang, this thing is still snappy. Like, it's really fast. And again... It looks like because we're using a 1080p monitor, the OS has actually scaled up a bit because it's a standard resolution and or the AOSP thingamajiggers are actually working now that I've rebooted the OS and for some reason I got kicked out of it. Uh, sure, we'll do this finished setup thing because why not? Because um, then it just gets that out of the way. Checking for updates. Whoa. Uh, we're not going to do a copy. Should give me the option to sign up with my Google account, you think. Because I didn't do that in the initial setup. There we go. Okay. Let me sign up with my Google stuff and I'll be right back. Okay. Getting account info now. It's probably going to want me to restore a backup from some old Android device I've had in the past. And I'm probably not going to do that. Okay. Backup to Google Drive. No, nah, not interested. Um, again, I don't want to do anything like that because it's not really necessary for a machine like this right now. Um, change font size. What are we running in? Oh, it looks like it's just the default. I mean, this is totally fine. I don't have a problem with this. Um, so I think I'll probably just leave it alone. Change wallpaper. I don't think we have any others. No. So that's, that's fine. Um, I'll just stick with the one that it has at the moment. And then done for now. Okay, and here we go. 
so how many app updates do we have? It's probably gonna have at least a few because uh, Google apps are pre-installed on this thing. So uh, can we end this session? That would be kind of nice. I think we should have to hit the X up there. Um, or apparently I'm loading it down a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here we are in the Play Store. Oh, we have got some graphical problems. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, it shouldn't have been surprising. Um, let's see here. My apps and games. Okay. So we only have three updates. So let's just go and get those out of the way. Yeah. Play Store has got some graphical problems. Uh, I wonder if there's actually any games. We could try GTA San Andreas. We could see if... Okay, it does let me install it. Although, as you can see, the problem is it looks like we're on a phone, even though we're not. So all the buttons are, like, squished into the center. I don't like how Google does this. It's really kind of annoying, rather. Um, we could try Angry Birds 2. Uh, that's a possibility. And then I also saw Minecraft. And I know everybody's going to be like, oh, please play the Minecraft. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I only have it on here because I let other people use Minecraft back in the day. So that way they have something to do when I'm out in my dad's house. But that's only, that's like the only reason. Security alert and a relisted item on something I don't care about. Whoa. That's nice. Okay, so back over to the My Apps and Games. Like This thing's actually running really fast, even still. So despite the graphical glitching going on in the Play Store, it seems to be completely usable. Nothing wrong with that at all. So that's really surprising. And um, I suppose also while we're in here, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Uh, let's go back to the home. And then uh, I thought I clicked on you. Why is it not working? I don't know. Uh, all right, so let's see, search. Let's search for Discord. Yeah, it's still graphical glitching all over the place, but it does appear to be working. I'm hoping this doesn't like, whoops, um, crash the OS. I hope not. Uh, we'll get Firefox, because why not? That's my browser of choice, personally. And uh, I have no idea if the sound is actually working. I guess we can go and check that real quick because I haven't done that yet. Yeah, so far, no performance problems. It actually seems to be just fine. So let's see here. Oh, oh, it's a little stuttery, but... Oh, actually, the sounds are working. Of course, these are the AOSP sounds, so they're very boring by today's standards because they're basically used in, like, Android 4. And they haven't bothered to change them. Most of them, they don't even come through speakers on mobile devices. And I will set this one, because why not? Okay, back to the Play Store. Um, I can't even do anything. I, You can tell this is probably made for a touch screen rather than anything else. Okay, well, I will return when we got some things installed to try out. Okay, I've returned with a couple of different things just to try this thing out. So, got a couple different games. I'm trying to get EPSX E to work. I haven't had any success with trying to get the BIOS file to load yet, but I don't know. We'll see if we can figure it out. I also installed Firefox because I prefer that as my mobile web browser over Chrome, personally, just because all my bookmarks and crap are on there, and it works well enough, so don't at me. So, first things first, YouTube. That should work, so whatever. You know, looking for incomplete doubt. I don't even have a YouTube premium, so I don't know what this blink is. That's a little weird, but okay. Um, I like blink. No, it's because of this stupid thing. I'm just going to get rid of that because that's what I was trying to get the ROM file from it down with this APK. So, mm, legitimacy. But as you can see, it's still running pretty good, I would say. I'm going to go under apps and crap later. So I think the first thing we'll try is something that's pretty easy to run, that is Angry Birds 2. So, oh, does it need file system access or does it just not work? Angry Birds 2 keeps stopping. Well, that's uh, good. Uh, that's good. Uh, how about uh, Flappy Bird here? Does that work? Flappy Bird, uh, this app was built for an older version of Android and may not work properly. Well, obviously, because it was built in 2013 for like Android 4.0. So, you know, whatever, right? All right, let's see if the OG Angry Birds work, or Angry Birds, f uh, <laughs> Let's 
Well, I suck already. <laughs> we all get the point of this game, but I'm just having some fun with it. Who remembers this back in the day? Try to sit there and play this, try to beat the record. I was one of them that had the OG. Not on iOS, but on Android. And I suck at it still. Oh well, that was fun. Okay, so now we got those out of the way. Let's see if we can get um, Grant the Thought of San Andreas to work here, because yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna have any luck as well. Um, that's interesting. I wonder why it's not working. I wonder if it's just something to do with the the graphics, like it can't initialize. That's a possibility because these games are mostly compiled for ARM. They're not meant for x86, so that could be why they're not working. And that's probably why Flappy Bird is a rare incidence of it actually like working for some reason. And of course, Discord is x86. We know that. So that works. Still has some graphical glitching, but it seems to work fine. So, you know, whatever. Uh... I'll probably just put some of these issues down to just, you know, Android x86 as a whole. Because, again, this won't run everything. It'll run some things, but typically not everything. So I don't know if there's anything else in the Play Store that we can try doing that would work. Because, obviously, it seems like most games are off the table. And, uh, yeah. If you try Chinatown Wars, but that's going to be another download. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait on. So my guess is that... Um, we can try Smash Hit, but again, I don't think it's going to work, but we can give it a try. Okay. And survey says no. Okay, so that's obviously a problem. But we already knew that just based on the, um, on the other games that I tried to get working. Um, we're also going to uh, uninstall them because obviously uh, 3D for some reason is not working. Uh, Flappy Bird seems to work though, but then again, it's 2D, so I would hope that would work. And then again, I'm trying to get EPSXE to work here, but even with root access, I can't seem to figure out the file system issues that are going on right now. So I go under the storage folder, emulated, and then there's just nothing in there that this uh, program expects. So I downloaded this ES File Explorer program, which looks good on this display resolution because it's meant for a phone, but whatever, it works. Uh, get out of here. So it has root access, which as you can see, here it is. Um, I'm gonna remember this choice forever. So as you can see, we have root access to the file system, which is also what EPSXE has access to. If I go back to the root here, as you can see, it also has root access. So it's not that we can't get into it, but the problem is that right now it seems like the storage, or at least this particular part of it is read only. So I could try to, um, let me just see here. I think it was an internal storage download. And then I had this .bin file for the BIOS. And normally, normally you could just go copy, then you'd find the EPSXE folder. Like for example, if I go back to here, or no, that's not the thing I was thinking of. Uh, but there's like a folder where it has EPSXE in it. And then as you can see, I've already got the BIOS file in there, but uh, for some reason, I'm not sure if it's finding it at all. So if I go back here, uh, whoops, that's not working. Definitely a little on the unstable side. I could try running BIOS, try to allow, maybe see if that helps. Uh, oh, did it find it? Okay, I guess it did find it. I guess I'm just too impatient. Yeah, it found it, whatever this notification's for. See, I copied and pasted it in here because I wasn't sure what the deal was. And now it's, now it's seeing everything. Okay, all right, never mind then. Um, so give me a second. I need to set some things here as far as the control. I don't have my Xbox controller plugged in. What I should do is plug it in. But anyways, um, so let's try running the BIOS and see if it crashes. Oh, hey, hey, it works. 
Hey, hey, that's cool. All right, that is awesome. So that seems to be working just fine. All right, that actually pleasantly surprises me. Um, since this has Radeon graphics, I would figure OpenGL would probably be fine, and it indeed is. And I could probably go onto the Play Store even and go look up the OpenGL plugin here, which as you can see, here it is. And then I could try to install this and I could take advantage of it inside of EPSXE, which I don't know why it created a shortcut on the home screen for that. It doesn't really need to, but sure, why not? But now I can actually go in and run the BIOS and the frame limit, you can turn that off, but that's always fun to play with. But yeah, you can play games like Gran Turismo 2, Spyro the Dragon. Uh, if you're into this sort of thing, you can play Tekken. Like, there's a bunch of things you could do with this. It works really well on Android, actually. So this is a potential candidate for having Android on a thin client. You could do emulation. Android's a great option for that. There's a ton of great emulators for Android. So it's just the problem is the 3D seems to have an issue with this particular thin client, but I can't say I blame it because, um, you know, drivers are not really available for Android for these computers. You're mostly relying on the hardware support that comes in the Linux kernel, which again is what Android is, de is derived off of is the Linux kernel, as I showed in the terminal emulators running kernel 4.19, because this is Android 9.0. So it is a little behind. So I'm not sure what the deal is with the hardware compatibility but you know it is what it is so yeah open source android seems to work really well no major problems here other than just drivers and little nitpicky things so honestly i would say that if you've got a thin client or some older computer you could try this for yourself there's no harm no foul there's the live version and generally speaking the live version and how it runs is going to be identical to how you would install it on the local disk so there's no harm, no foul. I honestly would say that. So, you know, it's probably worth giving it a go on your own thing if you wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna open up my Gmail because obviously that's gonna show my email. I don't wanna show that on camera. So I would say that is a success. And the nice thing is you just press the power button and bada boom, bada bing. You have screenshot, you have sleep, restart, power off, and it shuts off in like three seconds, which is ridiculous. See, and it's off. That's a really fast shutdown. <laughs> so, yeah, give it a go for yourself if you feel like you want to, I guess. But for me, no, this thin client's more for dinking around, so I'm going to move on to the next project. But hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. If you didn't like it so much, well, then the other button works too. If you want to see more content with the thin client or maybe some other machines or just in general you like this content, there's a red button down below that says subscribe. You should probably click on it because it will help me out a lot. And if you feel like you want to see when I upload new videos, there'll be a little bell next to the subscribe button. I'd appreciate you clicking on that, but you don't have to. It's up to you. And until the next video, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.